Hey guys, it's Aubrey Morrell back with another kiln opening. Uh, this is just some of the stuff that I've been making for the show coming up on the first. Nothing too crazy in here, just some um, sponge holders, spoon rests, and a couple of little new trinket trays that I'm excited to see. So we will just hop right into it. The kiln is actually cool today because I had too many other things going on <laughs> to get to it. So it is fully cooled. Okay. Um, I'll show you my little trinket trays. I kind of did a, um, a light and a dark version of this. So my nephew has a 3D printer and I had him make me, um, this shape to cut out, um, Originally, I thought it was smaller than this, but it ended up being huge. So I was like, well, we'll just make them little old trays. Um, so this didn't turn out exactly like I was hoping. Um, what I had done is three coats of snow, Amico snow on there. And then I did painted underglaze on top of that. And I've done that before, but I did water down the underglaze a little bit and it still came out shiny. So this time I did um, underglaze on there, but I did not water it down and it came out as a matte finish. So I might need to cover it with some clear and refire. And then I was gonna put mother of pearl over it. Um, there are also some spots that I could add more underglaze to, but the, the, it looks cute, just not what I was hoping for. I wonder if that doesn't come off, does it? Y'all let me know, because I have no clue. Ouch, the sharp. This one needs a little work. I did stilt them on the back because I wanted both the front and the back to be glazed. So I'm popping the stilts off. <laughs> this one I did uh, three coats and I got, now I got fingerprints. And I just had lunch, so my hands are a little greasy. Okay, <clears throat> I did three coats of obsidian and then on all of the raised portions, I did, um, my hands are leaving fingerprints. On the raised portions, I added one coat of Fool, Mako's Fool's Gold, which again is like, uh, I believe it's similar to Cosmic Tea Dust. I don't think they're exactly the same, but they're very close. But you can see, well, hopefully you can see in the light, if you look past my fingerprints, um, the raised areas have the sparkle. So that's really pretty. And then I was gonna go back and fill in the moon holes, the moon shapes with um, gold. So that'll, that one will be pretty. And then it's just a little trinket tray. Cute. Uh, my kids have some stuff in here. Uh, so cosmic, not cosmic, <laughs> fool's gold does not look as pretty on white <laughs> as it does on black. It looks like mud, sparkly mud. But now we know. That was my daughter's. She made a little um, spoon for her ramen bowl she made. She made a ramen bowl with a spoon, but the ramen bowl broke. So we were just left with a spoon. So we took that as an opportunity to test out some glaze. Uh, she also made <laughs> this little donut. That's what you want to call it? Donut? I don't even know what color. I think that's Snapdragon. She, I was filling the kiln and she's like, wait, wait, and I want to put my stuff in there. And so she just slapped some glaze on it real quick. Um, if you're curious what Fool's Gold looks like on its own, it's not my favorite. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, how do you get the right glare? It's like a it's like a brown but it's a little bit patchy and then you've got the sparkles it's got a lot of sparkle in it though 
I think my favorite thing to do with the fool's gold is to put it on top of the v of the obsidian though. Cause on its own, it's just kind of me. You can see on the back better. It's blotchy brown, but very sparkly. Um, she also, which one of them made this? Oh, Kenzie made this. Um, my nephew cut out, uh, I had him make me a stamp that's this shape. She didn't clean up the edges, so it, you can, it's hard to see the shape, but. And then we have little letter stamps, Faith, Hope, and Love. And then she did Snapdragon and Cobalt Celadons. Cute. Um, my middle daughter, Kayla, she made one as well. It says 4th of July. And then this is Indigo Float, I believe which indigo float is so pretty. I don't know if it's capturing on camera very well, but very pretty. She did good and we glazed both sides. So I had to stilt that too. Okay, I'm gonna get all my stilts out of here. I just made these stilts myself, by the way, if y'all have never done that, because if you look online to buy stilts, they are expensive. So I just got a triangle cookie cutter, cut out a bunch of triangles, and then you can buy these short little uh, high temp wires on Amazon. And I just poked them in there and then bisque fired them and they were good to go. And I have been using them over and over again. So, and they don't warp like, um, these are some that I had bought way back, but you can see they've warped and these are not doing that. So yeah, make your own stilts. Maybe I can make a video of that sometime. Okay, um, my cones, five and a half, because uh, this one I think was in there a little crooked. So probably more like, yeah, it's five and a half, but exactly what I, target for oh that one ran a little bit okay uh spoon rest this is indigo float that is just such a pretty color it is not picking up on camera very well but there's a lot of depth in that glaze that is so pretty and it looks good on texture but you can see it ran so we're gonna grind a little bit on that not a big deal though see the same thing but this one didn't run Indigo float. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I just, I love blues and greens and glazes. Uh, I'm trying to venture out into more <laughs> warm colors, like the reds and the oranges. There's just so much more blue and green variety out there. And I'll get to grind on my shelf a little bit too. Not bad, just a tad. But I did, I did just add more kiln wash, so we should be good. Okay, uh, lots of spoon rest in here because I, you know, these things are quick to make, they dry quick, and <laughs> so I didn't have to crunch time to get them done. Um, a good orange glaze. Deep Sienna Speckle by Amico. It is such a pretty orange. Uh, it, it's always a good finish. It's always a nice feel. It's reliable and it's a pretty color. But I made a sponge holder, that's what that is. And then two spoon rests that match it. Pretty, pretty. Can you see that? Which way am I going? I like the swirl and the spoon rest. It's pretty. Okay. Another sponge holder. In ancient copper. And I have to do four coats of ancient copper to get this pretty color. But that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then to go with that, copper stuff seems to sell really well. I need to make more of it. Um, 
but I made two spoon rests to go with it. And they don't go with it, but if someone gets a sponge holder, I can be like, you need the spoon rest. <laughs> but so pretty. And as always, Ancient Copper always pings slightly. Don't know why, because it doesn't, there's never any crazing. Like I've looked at them and maybe, maybe it's so fine that I can't see it, but I've looked them over really well before and I could never see any crazing. This is Lustrous Jade. Pretty. Probably could have done a little bit less. I think I accidentally put four coats on this one because I lost count. <laughs> so uh, I do have a pretty red. Um, it is Coyote Cherry Satin, but it's a satin. So uh, if you don't like that, so I know some people don't care for the feel or look of satin glazes. I think it's pretty, um, but not everyone's cup of tea. But the thing with, I think I said this in my last video, but the thing with Cherry Satin is it dries so quickly. You have to get your brush heavily loaded and work fast so that you can get a smooth application because if it dries, lumpy on your piece then it'll fire lumpy so that's so pretty though i love it gorgeous okay last piece <laughs> i had already made a sponge holder in the cherry satin and i made a sponge holder in lemon cream satin so i made a spoon rest just to go along with that if they so choose but nothing crazy again it feels just like the cherry satin does so if you don't like that this is not the place for you but it is applied the same way um so i don't have anything else that's new for the show to be fired uh the show is on saturday so i don't have enough time to make anything else for that show so what i'm gonna do is just load this kiln up with my bulk order I've got about 30 cups over there that I have glazed. They're just sitting there ready to be fired. So I'm going to load her up and keep her busy for a while. <laughs> but <clears throat> oh, I will always say it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos. I appreciate it. And I do uh, love hearing your feedback or your experiences because I, it's been a year and a half. I'm still new to all this. And so I welcome any um, constructive criticism. <laughs> Um, well, I think that's it for today, but until next time, guys, I'll see you later.